For millions of artifacts in the Henry Ford's digital collections, our experts choose three and reveal the surprisingly curious connections between them. What do a 17th century windmill, an 1830s mechanical winnower, and a 1960s dream car have to do with one another? To quote a famous American troubadour, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. We've harnessed the wind for thousands of years to power boats, to pump water, and to grind grain. New England colonists took advantage of strong ocean breezes with structures like the Ferris Windmill, built in the mid-1600s on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Rain was emptied into hoppers on the windmill's top floor. Wind turned the large canvas-covered arms, which then drove millstones inside the building. Gravity carried grain to those stones and then carried the finished flour down to the first floor for sifting and sorting. Farmers depended on wind for winnowing, separating wheat grain from chaff. When wheat was hand-tossed in a winnowing basket, even a slight breeze would carry away the lightweight chaff while the heavier grain fell back into the basket. Fanning machines, like this circa 1830 example, mechanized this process. A hand crank fan generated an artificial breeze that blew grain and chaff across vibrating screens. The heavier grain fell through the screens into a bin below. An artificial breeze powered Chrysler's 1963 turbine sedan, too. Granted, it was a very fast and very hot breeze, the car's engine used expanding gases, released by burning fuel and air, to turn a fan-like turbine, which then turned the rear wheels. Fittingly, Chrysler used a windmill to illustrate the process in this promotional booklet. Fifty turbine cars were built for public tests. While the engines were remarkably smooth and had 80% fewer moving parts than a piston engine, they were thirsty, averaging just 11.5 miles per gallon. Test drivers complained about the poor fuel economy, and Chrysler never put the turbines into regular production. Even if we don't drive turbine cars, turbines may yet power us on the road, albeit indirectly. Electric cars are more popular today than they've been in more than a century, and much of our electricity is generated by turbines. Turbines driven by steam, by water, or more and more, by wind. We've been harnessing the wind for thousands of years, and we may only be getting started.